Here are two laptops. This one is the Acer Predator Helios 500 and this one is the Predator Triton 500 SE. Both with i9 processors and RTX 3080, the specs look pretty sharp. However, the right one is only about 22mm thick. The left one is 35mm thick. That's 75% thicker. And what's more surprising is this laptop has two power adapters, which weigh 2.7 kilos in total, but this laptop itself only weighs 2.34 kilos. So the charger of this laptop is even heavier than the flagship gaming laptop. For computer noobs, they might think, only fools would buy this laptop. Only experts know, although they both have i9 and 3080, their product positioning and even performance are completely different. Why is there such a difference when their specs are the same? For gaming laptops, isn't the thinner the better? In this video, we will compare these two products. Before we start, we need to figure out why Acer released these two products. Acer has released four gaming laptops this year. They are Shadow Knight Predator Helios 300, Predator Helios 500, and Predator Triton 500 SE. Shadow Knight is the entry level including Shadow Knight Dragon with AMD processor and Shadow Knight Engine with Intel processor. As for high-end models, Acer has dedicated models called Predator, including Helios and Triton. We have already made videos for both of them. This year, Acer released two Helios models, Helios 300 and 500. Helios 300 looks pretty normal, just a large screen gaming laptop, which looks a bit plump. That looks pretty nice. But Helios 500 looks a bit outrageous. Look at this figure, I just want to say it. It's huge. Triton 500 SE looks more restrained. The top panel is even a bit business style. Now, you might know better about them. Helios 300 and 500 are both dedicated to gaming performance. While Triton 500 SE is more like an all-arounder and the Predator lineup, it's great for gaming and it also fits in the office. It's suitable for various situations. Now that we know the difference between Helios 500 and Triton 500 SE, let's take a look at the specs to have a better understanding. For both processors, both laptops have i9 with 8 cores and 16 threads. What's different is Helios 500 comes with a K processor, which means higher clock speed and overclocking support. The graphics cards are actually different. They're both RTX 3080 with GA104 cores. Triton 500 SE has an 8GB VRAM max power at 100 watts, and Helios 500 has a 16GB VRAM max power at 160 watts. In terms of RAM, you can do expansion on both laptops. The factory capacities are respectively 32GB and 64GB. The clock speeds are both DDR4 3200MHz. Laptops use two 1TB PM9A1 with RAID 0 meaning faster read writes. Helios 500 also has 2TB HDD for more storage space. As for the display, Triton 500 SE has a 2K 165Hz gaming screen, a color gamut of 100% sRGB. Helios 500 has a 4K 120Hz mini LED screen with a wide color gamut of 100% DCI-P3 which has better resolution and color gamut. They're both expensive. Triton 500 SE costs about $3,000, Helios 500 about $5,500. It's pretty stressful for your wallet. Okay, after the specs, I guess some of you may wonder, they both have i9 processors. Is there a big gap in performance? Well, how much difference is there? Let's do a field test to find out. Triton 500 SE has i9-11900 single core clock speed of 4.9 GHz and an all core clock speed of 4.4 GHz. The i9-11980HK on Helios 500 is 0.1 GHz higher in single and multi-core speeds. In the Cinebench R20 loop test, their first two scores were pretty high, which means their burst performance is not bad. After that, the scores drop due to power limit. Triton 500 SE stayed around 4700 and Helios 500 stayed around 5400. There's a gap of 700, which equals to a difference of 15%. In the power log during the benchmark, except for the first run, Triton 500 was 75 watts, while Helios 500 was 110 watts. As for each clock speed, Triton 500 SE stayed at 3.75 GHz, while Helios 500 stayed at 4.25 GHz. X265 HD benchmark Helios 500 scored 71 FPS and Triton 500 SE scored 67 FPS. As this benchmark focuses on the burst performance, the gap between the two laptops is a little smaller than the R20 loop. In single core, Triton 500 SE scored 556 in R20 single thread behind the 621 score of Helios 500. In the log, we find the max CPU clock speed was locked at 4.4 GHz, lower than the nominal 4.9 GHz, so the single core was low, maybe because this is a sample. If it had run at 4.9 GHz, their single core performance wouldn't be so different. Next, let's take a look at the graphics card. In the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark for DX12, 
Triton 500 SE at 10385 and Helios 500 at 12286 24% higher. Then there is the Fire Strike Extreme for DX11, Triton 500 SE at 12936 and Helios 5 15498 20% higher. Super Precision Extreme at 1080, Triton 500 SE at 6409 and Helios 500 at 8113 27% higher. 100 watt 3080s clock speed is low due to power limits. Take Time Spy, for example. The clock speed was only about 1350 MHz, while 160 watt 3080 can reach over 1700 MHz. Let's sum up the theoretical performance. Compared with Triton 500 SE, Helios 500 has about 15% higher CPU multi-core performance. Single core performance is fairly close. The performance of graphics card is about 25% higher because of higher power brings higher core speed. I guess you know how it is theoretically. When it comes to gaming and productivity, will there still be such a big difference? Let's move on. Triton 500 SE supports Advanced Optimus, which is automatic MUX switch. It can boost the frame rate with MUX switch, and Helios 500 doesn't have it, so it's not an advantage to high frame rate games. To make it clearer, we set the resolution to 2560 by 1440. Let's see the frames per second performance. Online games first. Dota 2, the highest graphic quality in 2K resolution. Triton 500 SE could run up to 174 frames per second, and Helios 500 only got 129. It's the same with another game with high frame rate, CSGO. Triton 500 SE could run up to 456 frames per second, and Helios 500 only got 351. But the popular game Apex Legends doesn't rely much on Mux Switch. Helios 500 reached 187 frames per second, higher than Triton 500 SE's 157. As for PC games, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Triton 500 SE ran at 82 frames per second, and Helios 500 got 104 with its better GPU. The same with Metro Exodus. Triton 500 SE got 57 frames per second, which is barely smooth, and Helios 500 was 10 frames per second higher, which is a bit better. But for the hardware-intensive games like Cyberpunk 2077, neither was able to run perfectly smoothly. At ultra setting, without DSL on, Triton 500 SE only got 38 frames per second, and Helios 500 also only got 51 frames per second. However, the RTX 3080 supports DLSS. They both ran perfectly smooth with DLSS on. A quick summary. In terms of gaming with the MUX switch, Triton 500 SE gets higher frame rate online games like CSGO. And Helios 500, with its higher power supply, PC games at the same resolution run more smoothly. With an external display to enable MUX Switch, Helios would certainly beat Triton 500 SE in gaming. I think MUX Switch is really necessary for 30 series gaming laptops. I hope Acer will support it in the next lineup. Let's take a look at the productivity. The Adobe Suite test was surprising. I thought Triton 500 SE would be weaker than Helios 500. Turns out that Photoshop was only 48 less and After Effects was only 17 less. Almost could count as a margin of error. As for Premiere, Triton 500 SE was even 70 higher. And in the industrial software SpecView 2020 test, the high power and large VRAM graphics card of Helios 500 came into play. The scores in each test are higher than Triton 500 SE. Overall, in terms of productivity, the difference is not as obvious as in gaming. No visible difference for programs rely on single core performance. For 3D programs relying on GPU, Helios 500 has a certain advantage. All right, after the performance test, now let's take a look at their exterior. The first difference is the size. Triton 500 SE weighs 2.34 kilograms with a height of 19.3 to 21.4 millimeters. As for Helios 500, the body alone weighs 3.99 kilograms. Also, it needs two 330 watt adapters for power supply. Each weighs 1.19 kilograms, 2.7 kilograms in total with cast. The adapter alone is heavier than Triton 500 SE. The height nearly doubles to 35 millimeters. The second difference is the peripheral. The arrow keys of Triton 500 SE are also full size. No numeric keypad. Key travel is a bit short. Typing feels mediocre. Helios 500 does a better job on the keyboard. Standard arrow key plus numeric keypad. Longer key travel. The typing feels more comfortable and the WASD and arrow keys can be replaced with pressure switch which allows linear control in racing games. Also, Triton 500 SE uses the popular integrated touchpad with Touch ID in the upper left. It feels okay. Helios 500 uses the classic touchpad with physical buttons. It just feels alright, but it's rather efficient. The last difference is the ports. Triton 500 SE has two Thunderbolt 4, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A, as well as a RJ45 network port, a 3.5mm headset port, an HDMI 2.0 and UHS card reader. Helios 500 has an extra USB-A port and mini DP, but no SD card reader. 
For an ultrabook, being slim often means fewer ports but not always full for a gaming laptop. You can see, ports on thin gaming laptops are not always less than the heavier ones. Their display specs are also different. Triton 500 SE is a more regular 2K 165Hz IPS screen, while Helios 500 is a 4K 120Hz wide color gamut mini LED screen. Why? I think because Triton 500 SE's graphic card has less power, and the VRAM is lower. It can perform well at 4K, with 2K it is easier to juggle between refresh rate and resolution. Helios 500's graphic card has higher power. It's inclined to extreme performance. 4K mini LED screen would naturally be the best choice. Next is the field test. The color gamut volume of Triton 500 SE is 103.6% sRGB, and the gamut coverage is 98.3%, while Helios 500 has a volume of 101.4% and gamut coverage of 96% DCI-P3. But there may be color accuracy issues with color correction. Tested in the corresponding color gamut, the average delta E of Helios is 3.03 and the maximum is 6.5, just so-so. And Triton 500 SE is much better. The average delta E is 1.16 and the maximum is 2.06. As for brightness, the mini LED has a huge advantage. The maximum brightness of Triton 500 SE is 538 nit, which is fairly bright, but Helios 500 is even brighter with a maximum brightness of 625 nit. With HDR on, it can reach 830 nit at full screen. The local brightness peak is even higher. The maximum brightness can reach 1130 nit. Another advantage of mini LED is the high contrast ratio, bright enough for high light and dark enough to display shadows. It's not like an ordinary IPS panel that looks gray. Finally, the dimming method. Triton 500 SE uses full brightness DC dimming, while Helios 500 uses full brightness 1250 Hz PWM dimming. So the mini LED screen looks strobe-like in the video. In fact, the flash rate is so high that you can't see it with the naked eye. In my opinion, both are decent screens, but with different focus. Triton has a higher refresh rate, a standard color gamut, and better color accuracy. While the mini LED of Helios is more dominant in specs and works better in brightness and contrast ratio, but not in color accuracy. Finally, let's disassemble both of the laptops to compare the interiors. Helios has a quick release design, so it's relatively more maintainable. Just unscrew the two screws here and remove the plate. You can replace the memory and hard drive. However, for dust cleaning, you'll need to deal with a lot of screws and cables. There's a lot of work after removing the battery. You need to remove the middle cast and HDD to see the full interior. Triton 500 SE is less maintainable because the motherboard is inverted. Memory and hard drive are in the front. You can't do anything after removing the bottom panel. To replace the hard drive, thermal paste, or clean dust, you need to take down the whole motherboard and disconnect all the screws and cables. Note there is a hidden screw in the upper right. You'll need to remove the screw, only then can you remove the motherboard. Both require a certain level of skill. If you are not a handyman, you had better not do it yourself. Leave the maintenance to the service center technician. Now, let's take a look at the insides. Their batteries here, Triton 500 SE is 99.98 watt hours, while the battery of Helios is smaller with only 74 watt hours. As for battery life, Triton 500 SE lasts 6 hours and 45 minutes, and Helios 500 lasts 3 hours and 37 minutes. The power of Helios 500 is too high. The battery is essentially a small UPS for emergencies in case of power failure. Here are the hard drives. Both laptops have two 1 terabyte PM9A1 to set up RAID 0. The speed is not too different. For sequential read-write speed, they both reached five digits, and in the HD tune test, Helios's cache read-write speed is 8500, Triton's is a bit lower at 7500. In addition, Helios 500 has a 2.5 inch hard drive bay mounted with a Western Digital 2 terabyte HDD. You can replace it if needed. The memory slot is here. Triton 500 SE has 32 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz memory, while a Helios 500 has 64 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz memory. Both are dual rank with four bank groups. Both are in 3200 gear two mode. The difference is small. Next is the wireless card. Both laptops have the killer AX1650i, a modified version of Intel AX201, which supports Wi-Fi 6. Finally, let's compare the thermals. Triton 500 SE uses three fans and four heat pipes. Two main heat pipes and two pipes for cooling power supply and VRAM. Among the three fans, one of them has metal fan blades. The official name is the 5th Gen Aeroblade 3D Fan. It can provide higher airflow and lower noise. The cooling of Helios 500 is even more wild. It has two metal fans, three heat pipes, and a large vapor chamber. Viewed from the side, it has a much larger fin area than Triton, which means better cooling capacity. It's easy to see that due to their different sizes, thermal design and scalability are also different. 
Triton 500 SE has a thinner body, and with inverted motherboard and large battery, the interior looks more compact. And Helios 500 is much more aggressive. Bigger cooling module, quick release design, and an extra 2.5 inch hard drive slot. But it also makes maintenance more difficult. Finally, let's compare the cooling effect. Room temperature at 25 degrees Celsius with AVX512 off in standalone FPU stress tests. Both laptops reached 100 degrees Celsius. Triton 500 SE reached 70.5 watts and 3.6 gigahertz. Helios 500 reached 93 watts and 4.0 gigahertz. Easier for maintenance and expansion, but it's also thicker. In dual stress tests, Triton's CPU stayed at 100 degrees Celsius, 60 watts and 3.4 gigahertz. The GPU was 69.8 degrees Celsius, 75 watts, and 1080 megahertz. The total power of CPU and GPU was 135 watts. Helios 500's power settings are more aggressive. The CPU was at 65 watts, 98 degrees Celsius, and 3.3 gigahertz. And the GPU was 82.5 degrees Celsius, 160 watts, and 1695 megahertz. The total power was 225 watts. In the GPU stress test, Triton 500 SE was 67.9 degrees Celsius, 100 watts, and 1365 megahertz. Helios 500 was 75.6 degrees Celsius, 160 watts, and 1725 megahertz. The noise level of both laptops was 54 dB. Triton 500 SE has smaller fans, so the noise is sharper, and Helios is lower. They both have hypercooling mode with full fan speed. After enabled, both laptops' power didn't change much. The temperature dropped a little. In hypercooling mode, the GPUs would automatically overclock, so the GPU speed will be a bit higher. For surface temperature, Triton's overall temperature dropped about 3 degrees Celsius. The highest temperature was 39.4 degrees Celsius, and the WASD keys were at 32 degrees Celsius. In this picture, the hottest spot of Triton 500 SE was the key number 9 at 43.2 degrees Celsius. The heat was concentrated in the middle. WASD keys were 35 degrees Celsius and spacebar at 37.3 degrees Celsius. It was almost the same with Helios 500, the highest temperature in the center at 42.3 degrees Celsius. WASD keys were 34 degrees Celsius and spacebar at 37.2 degrees Celsius. Of course, the noise from hypercooling is also important. Triton 500 SE is 57.4 dB, while Helios 500 reached 63 dB, almost like a helicopter. To sum up, the cooling performance is also proportional to their size. Triton is thinner, so the power setting is conservative, and it is a bit hotter, the noise level's performance mode is similar. And Helios is rather heavy for its size, so a more aggressive power setting. The total power of 225 watts is much higher than Triton 500 SE, but there are still some parts that I'm not happy with. For example, the CPU temperature and the noisy fan in the hypercooling mode. I hope they can improve later. After the whole comparison, I believe you now have a general understanding of these two laptops. So let's summarize everything. First, the specs of these two laptops are similar. Both have the latest and best laptop processor, the best GPU, large memory, and SSD. The difference is in performance, which is caused by size difference. Even with the same hardware, the thinner gaming laptop does not fit a larger thermal mold due to space issue, so the power will be slightly lower than the bigger one. Also, a smaller space also affects the internal scalability, which means less potential for upgrades. Muscular gaming laptops don't need to consider thickness. It can do better on peripherals and ports. For example, Helios 500 has a brighter mini LED screen and a touchpad with physical buttons, as well as longer key travel and even special keys with pressure sensors. These are the advantages over the slim ones. However, thin gaming laptops are better in terms of portability. Also, many support PD charging. When we don't need high performance, we could use a cell phone charger to power it up, so it's much more practical. In my opinion, I think the thick laptops like Helios 500 are more suitable for those who need a daily high performance and can't access desktops. And thin gaming laptops like Triton 500 SE are more for those who need to travel a lot and still need high performance. As usual, three pros and three cons for each one for your reference. While Helios 500 was rather cool, highest at 33 degrees Celsius, WASD keys and palm rest were at room temperature level. All right, that's it for now. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. If you want to see more, follow our official WeChat account. I'll post a review every day. These two laptops may be good or bad, but we only have one purpose, to share information and provide guidance. This is Biba Review Studio. I'm Juwan. I'll see you.